Thank you for auditing the unedited, always positive new music review show hosted by a French professor who was fooled. I, what you got me. Alfonso Camisto, better known as The Alchemist, has completely fooled me with his most recent release with Domo Genesis, No Idols. How did he fool me? Because <laughs> I listened to it all the way through, two times. Loved it. Listened to it with my daughter in the car, listened to it with my baby in the, in the little playpen. And then on the third listen, I decided to look up the lyrics, and it didn't come out last week. It came out in 2012. So, so he re-released it, or they re-released it on, on April 20th. You know, there, there's a bunch of holidays in April, two that I love, Easter and Orthodox Easter, and two that I don't really love that much, uh, April Fools, and of course, uh, for some reason, a lot of people like to celebrate Hitler's birthday and the Columbine Massacre on April 20th. So that's fine. I don't know why people choose to celebrate that date, uh, but they do. And, uh, and so he released it in honor of, of April 20th. So, you know, I guess it was sort of like a April Fool's on me, just 19 days too late. And, and what this really highlights to me, and the reason that I emphasize this personal story, is for two things. One, it shows how, I mean, it helps me to see how important he is as a producer, because I've only been listening to him since I started this channel in 2018, and I wasn't, you know, I think the first album of his I listened to was Lulu with Conway the Machine. So I just sort of have been oblivious to all of the things that he did and that he revolutionized. And hearing this from so long ago helps me to see, because, you know, this was made 11 years ago, but it could have been made last week. Save for a couple references, this is a ridiculously present album. Also, this helps me to want to go back in time and, and kick my own ass, you know? <laughs> in 2012, I was still saying that Nas was right and hip-hop is dead and it's no good and there's nothing good out there happening. And this was being released. I could have listened to this. What else was I doing in 2012? You know, living in the death throes of a difficult marriage, raising my kids, trying to get tenure, all that stuff. But... <laughs> Uh, this is a great album, and if and if I could just go back in time and play myself this, I'd be like, oh, okay, I guess there is good stuff happening in hip-hop. But that's why I'm here. That's why I am the Rip Van, Robert Van Winkle uh, of uh, music criticism. I fell asleep in around 2003, 2004, and I woke up in 2018. And this is a great example of Alchemist being able to match people's flows because that's the thing you know I just reviewed his his album with Larry June and Alchemist is so badass <laughs> as a producer he's so prolific that I didn't even blink with the idea that he came out with two albums this good in the span of two weeks it just sort of made sense to me you know I mean only Griselda uh, can come out with stuff this quick of this high quality and I just kind of thought yeah it makes sense okay he has a newborn baby okay he released this great album but it's just sort of made sense. But no, there's a long distance. Uh, I do also, this is getting me interested into sort of following the nature of the Alchemist's uh, uh, crate digging, because so many of the samples here, you know, they've now been found with 11 years, come from like, like Eastern Bloc, Cold War, Soviet era pop songs. You know, was he the first to do that? I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think. You know, I often think about Run This Town by Kanye and and the, the kraut rock that was used there. But this kind of international crate digging, and I know, Africa Bambata, Trans Europa Express by Kraftwerk. I know it's been around since the beginning. Uh, but this kind of deep international crate digging, is it really the alchemist? Is, is he the guy that really figured this out? I don't know. I didn't know a thing about Domo Genesis. Because this is the thing. When you are the Rip Van Robert Van Winkle of music criticism, I didn't, I didn't know Odd Future. I saw people wearing the OF hats in my school, and I thought it looked just like the font for WFNX in Boston. It was an alternative radio station in Boston. I thought it looked like like Simpsons donuts, you know? So I just, I didn't, I didn't know what OF stood for. I figured it was some skate brand. I, I don't know, you know? I missed out on the entire sort of internet SoundCloud era, the whole odd future thing. So I'm just left with this rapper who I enjoy quite a bit. You know, he doesn't quite stand out. It's clear how odd future kind of worked where it does seem like the cream did rise to the top based on, on what I have heard. You know, Earl Sweatshirt is so great and Tyler's so great, obviously. I've still never listened to a Frank Ocean album. Oh, Jesus. Sorry, you just threw something at your screen. Never. Not a single minute have I ever listened to Frank Ocean. 
Rip Van Robert Van Winkle is waiting to wake up on Frank Ocean, but he hasn't released an album. Apparently, he performed at Coachella, and it went great. Uh, so, you know, I've kind of, I'm just sort of like picking up, and I want to take you on this journey. You, if you're watching this, you probably are well aware of Domogenesis' importance, of Odd Future, of the whole thing. For me, it's all new. It's all new. It's 11 years old, and it's brand new. Uh, this does have a new cover, which did draw me into the album. You know, an image of uh, Kennedy's motorcade right after he had been shot with these weird sort of like polka dots over the faces. It's sort of like everything is a grassy knoll. It's been, everything's been recontextualized in these grassy fields. I don't know why, but it's an interesting image. It's provocative. No one knows what it means, but it gets the people going. Uh, there is sort of a loneliness to this album. I, I don't know. I, mean, I guess because it was released on, on 420 and I was joking earlier. I understand that it's a criminal code for marijuana and people who self-medicate um, like to treat it as though they're some kind of amazing heroes who have unlocked some kind of truth beyond a simple consumption for a change of brain chemistry like any other beer drinker. Um, you know, like there's a loneliness in it and I get the sense of somebody who feels kind of sad who's sort of expressing a kind of sadness. There's a kind of distance, and, and I think that fits in pretty well, especially with this idea of no idols. Uh, I, can, I can imagine, and I sort of get the sense, and based on my research that I've done for this class that I'm teaching on, on uh, hip-hop uh, in, in the college where I am, how are you teaching about hip-hop, but you don't know Odd Future? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, that, but I'm doing it. Uh, there's a lot of hip-hop that you can miss. Uh, I could see them becoming sort of like idols, almost like a boy band, that kind of energy. So I do think that's important. And there's a kind of alienation to fame, which comes in, especially on the track with Tyler, the creator, which I'll get to later. But let's get through the album, okay? Let's start off with the stamp, the second track on the album, click above the banana, above the banana, above the bananas, above my shoulder. I just went and had a biopsy. I like this rash going on. So they just cut into me and powering through. Smash the like bucket to show me some kind of solidarity um, for the song F Everybody Else. And this is just both of them at their best, Domogenesis and The Alchemist. This really tense beat with this cool bass like pulling off, like doo -doo 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 -doo. this like high drone of the strings, kind of stutter, funky step. He does this thing. And if my, if my own baby, who loves The Alchemist, by the way, is one of her favorite musicians, anything Alchemist produces, my baby loves to listen to, um, if you listen to the way that he samples drums and uses drums, one of the things he uses better than almost anybody else uh, is the, the sound of a hi-hat closing. It's a kind of a punctuated sound. I would have a hi-hat right here from downstairs and actually play the sound for you, but that would wake her up. Um, but it has a real nice punctuated sound, and especially on this album, that kind of is all over the place. So the tsk comes from the sound of hitting the cymbal and then you close it with your foot so it goes like that. That's that's why that noise is made in case you're not a musician. In case you've kind of wondered what comes from, that's what it comes from. And he's mixing together like this American drumming sample with a Russian pop singer, Valery Pavlov. No, Valery does not mean a woman. Valery is a man's name in much of the world. And so it's just this great combination of samples, this kind of just bizarrely, uh, almost like insultingly interesting combination uh, of beats here. A very simple, solid rap style here. I really like his imagery. Stuffing marijuana in a broken cigar, crack the sunroof, I like to feel close to the stars. Like the image of him cracking open the blunt is kind of like the car itself being cracked open, like he's freeing the tobacco, like he's freeing himself, like there's this image of like the smoke being smoked and the smoke rising. Uh, and sort of like the sunroof opening and like him rising out of the sunroof, there's a sort of unity of imagery in here, which is very evocative. Used to be shy, now I'm like the biggest boast in the yard, too close to me, y'all, ain't no hope approaching me, dog. Uh, nice kind of slanted rhymes there. Later, uh, <laughs> puffin' sticky, sippin' sizzy, word to juicy, B-word, I'm trippy. The exclusive B-word that's with me, making sure my drink ain't tipping when I'm hanging out the back. Like the, eh, that killed Biggie, Young Doms, I Bleed Ice Water. It's interesting that the theme of Biggie comes up a couple times in here, but just his great play with rhymes here um, and just his, his sort of approach in general uh, is, is 
this kind of way. It's a lot about smoking weed, but it's also just sort of about being awesome. He's not really rapping about crime. He's not really rapping about much other than those two main themes. I apologize if you hear sound also uh, recovering medically. Bo, Bo, no one wants to hear you lick. He's got the cone. He's got the cone of shame. You gotta smash like bucket. No, my dog's got the cone of shame. Wait, am I crooked here? Am I, am I tipping? Am I tipping? Do I, do I need an exclusive bitch to make sure I'm not tipping? Not you, dogs. Crazy drums at the end of the sample. Just really, if you listen to the way Alchemist uses drums, it's really astounding that the snares are rolling. He lets that kind of curling bass sound play at the end. And then like all of a sudden, you notice there's harpsichord. And the thing with some of Alchemist samples is at the end, you go, was that happening the whole time? Was that there the whole time? Or did he just throw it in there? Another member of uh, Odd Future Left Brain just sort of talks at the end here, just like, this is happening. You just heard that. But this song is simple, no chorus, fairly straightforward, which I think is in keeping with the rest of this project, which I really enjoy, but it doesn't have a lot of sort of like super high highs, I would say, uh, save, for, uh, save for Tyler's verse. Then we get to the opening track. We'll go through the rest of the album a little bit quicker here uh, with the song Prophecy has this great kind of high whining guitar, kind of a plodding piano. This is some kind of Estonian sample. I have a, I have a friend who's an Estonian translator and you don't. <laughs> so that's, that's who I roll with. I roll with Estonian samplers. Oh no, wait a minute. No, no, she's Latvian. Oh my God, sorry. Apologies, Estonia and Latvia are not the same place. It's terrible. He's digging hard in these crates. Very earnest, uh, intimate voice. The the beat kind of develops halfway through, slight like bass introduction. And then he has sort of a hustling verse. And it's funny because it's like when I first listened to this, I'm like, wow, like we're really in this hu hustle culture moment. You know, this reminds me of the kind of Gary Vee stuff that we hear on. Uh, sadly, on the Makami album or the Larry June stuff, it's a lot about like being an entrepreneur. And here we have, you determine what your future holds. So get up off that bull ish, you ins on, make a hustle and get this dough. Uh, but of course, this is way before kind of hustle culture reached its moment that it's in right now. So I guess this is the pre-hustle culture, hustle culture. Hustle culture. Try saying hustle culture. I'm not a stoner, but I like saying words over and over and over again. Hustle culture. Hustle culture. Next up is the stamp, F everyone else. Then we get to the song, All Alone. That's the kind of sadness of this album. Pitched up sample, it's a Portuguese sample. I think you could make an argument that The Alchemist is the closest thing hip hop has to Daft Punk in terms of his ability to find interesting samples, use them and recontextualize them. I'm not saying that makes him the best producer, but I think it helps to contextualize a different way of thinking about his art. He sort of like has these samples and always goes one more step with them. Um, cool, like that, those smashing hi-hats again. I ain't got no effing friends, trust these ends. You pissing in the wind, keeping your uh, circle so big. In front of a couple thousand kids I've never seen, to see they nod their heads is an effing dream. Uh, we sort of have this difficulty of being in front of fans and feeling good, but not feeling close, like not having intimate friends. This is a, a fairly typical problem with anybody in the public where they feel like they have a connection to their public, but not to their private. <laughs> You know, like not to their private circle. Uh, he has fans, not friends. And it's very sad. It's a very sad sort of all alone moment. Then we get to Elimination Chamber. This is one of three posse cuts, but it's actually the only posse cut. It seems like there should be more, but there's not. And it starts off with this like quote from something from wrestling, you know, underground rap and wrestling just goes together so much. I don't understand why but that's okay. I don't understand anime or, or pro wrestling post Hulk Hogan. So, and pre Hollywood Hogan. So I, I'm missing out on a lot. Goku, what's the name of the guy? Roku, the guy from Dragon Ball. I feel like I need to like watch Dragon Ball to understand uh, underground hip hop. <clears throat> Anyways, great <laughs> drums in the back, 70s rolling drone. This is more kraut rock from a band called brainstorm and it's one of these days but it's pitched up it sounds great and because this is an elimination chamber where only one person leaves i'm going to declare a winner who wins this 
Is it Domo? Is it Vince Staples? Is it Action Bronson? Is it Earl Sweatshirt? All of them are on this track. Domo is a very funny start. Oh so cocky, you can't stop me in this old Versace and watch the streets like it's roller hockey. Watch me in the streets like it's roller hockey? That's hilarious. <laughs> That's a hilarious line. That is a very, very funny lyric. Uh, your B word is floppy, given sloppy, she call me poppy, turn the doggies right into the face like she Kobayashi. We need a compilation of every single time a, a, a rap artist says the word Kobayashi. Because sometimes they say Kobayashi in reference to usual suspects. Kobayashi couldn't stop me, right? It's like ghost face line. And then sometimes they talk about it in terms of the hot dog star. Either way, Kobayashi gets a lot of play, which makes sense because it's such a great word. Multiple syllables, the sounds of it, it rhymes with so many things. Then we get to Earl Sweatshirt. Awesome, just a relentless flow. His voice goes so well with Dom. Whoop, system overload, itching, a foe to poach, spitting the engine on like a mother effing motorboat, which is sort of like, it's cool because that's how his flow is on the song. He has an actual relentless flow that does sound like a motorboat. And then we get to Vince Staples. 11 years ago, I thought Vince Staples was like 20. Like, how old is he in this? Like, nine? <laughs> how, how is it possible that Vince Staples, A, was on a track 11 years ago? Feel free to be mad at me and call me a fake head culture vulture in the comments. I've heard it before. I can hear it again. Uh, nothing you could do to me can hurt as bad as I want to scratch where they cut, <laughs> they cut the biopsy. I just, I want to scratch. Would you please scratch your own back right now? Just for me. That'll help me feel better. Just right there. Like, like right there. That's where they cut. <clears throat> It just so bad. So anyway, so somehow Vince Staples is on here. Uh, I'm just trying to do what Diddy got. I'm trying to get what Diddy got doing what got Biggie shot. Awesome line. Second reference to Biggie and his murder here. They told me I, that I wasn't ish, but left me in a litter box. Give it up and have a job uh, and get a job. Either, earlier line about, you know, mama shouldn't have given birth to me. Uh, a really amazing verse. And it's just a sort of reminder that Vince Staples, he's like, he's like the hipster's choice for the king of California. You know what I mean? Like, you could make, uh, there's so many great rappers out of California who do different things. And obviously Kendrick is the big name right now. And Kendrick is probably the guy. But damn, Vince Staples is good. And his last album was so good. And his guest appearances are so good. And he's been around. Then we get Action Bronson, who who just go, falls right off that with get a job. And he has kind of a gross sex verse. I'm disappointed in Action Bronson. Uh, French chefs kneel before me. I do like that line. <laughs> uh, take the shorty to the sortie. Um, but who wins? Who wins the match? Not Action Bronson. He has the weakest verse. Not Earl Sweatshirt. I love his verse, but I don't think it's as strong as Vince or Domo. And I'm giving it to Vince Staples. He wins this song. Tell me in the comments, who do you think wins the Elimination Chamber? Then we get to Power Ballad featuring Smoke Dizza, and it actually sounds like a power ballad. These great curly guitars, just very tight drums. There's even some chimes, um, and more sort of, it sounds like Eastern European samples. Money Talks, Shut Up and Listen, and Smoke Dizza's on here. Makes references to Girl Scouts, and then I went down this whole rabbit hole where he talks about how guru fans hate Solar, and it's really confusing because MC Solar is a very important figure in French rap music. He wasn't the first French rapper, but he was uh, the first sort of visible, internationally known French rapper. He worked with Guru on Jazz and Mataz. They were very similar rappers. And it's, I can't imagine anyone having beef with MC Solar. But it turns out there's a different guy whose name is Solar. <laughs> who did rip off Guru or messed around with his estate or something. So anyways, I spent way too much time this morning trying to figure out if people were just mis like confusing Solar with MC Solar or if I was. If you know more about the story, please tell me in the comments. Once you're done calling me a fake head culture vulture and scratching your back for me, uh, tell me a little bit more of that story. Next song is Me and My B-Word, Flutes, a stop and start beat. And you know, this is an interesting song because this is... A love song to weed, you know. And, and earlier I went off my little rant, you know. I'm I'm just mad because you know I I grew up around a lot of weed, and if you grow up with people who are supposed to be taking care of you smoking weed, uh, you grow up to hate weed. The same way like children of alcoholics grow up hating alcohol or become alcoholics themselves. That's my relationship with marijuana. So don't listen to me. I'm just a I'm just a bitter straight edge guy, you know. Um, 
I'm generally against self-medication. Like that's my general take. You know, I self-medicate with Tic Tacs and, and taking um, uh, tortilla chips and dipping them in butter. That's how I self-medicate. It's not good. It doesn't help me. Self-medication never helps you. Doesn't matter what form it takes. Doesn't matter. But still. What I think about is interesting about this is that it's this love song and you know he's sort of doing I don't know reminds me of that Nas song about you know I, I give you power I think there's a Tupac song where he sings a love song to a gun this kind of personification but it's ridiculously sad the idea of you know if I could marry you'd be my honor forever me and you Dom's and marijuana and it's just kind of sad right because it's sort of an isolating thing it's just a substance it's, it's something that changes your brain chemistry. Uh, it's not a substitute for interpersonal relationships. You know, a lot of people treat it that way. <laughs> See my previous comment about why I have such a com conflicted relationship with it. Um, but it does, it, it, it can, for some people, substitute for human interaction. And sadly, nothing substitutes for human interaction. So I'm not saying that the reason that he's all alone is because he wants to marry marijuana but I'd say he wants to marry marijuana because he feels so alone and it doesn't help. But hey, that's me. That's how I celebrate Hitler's birthday. Don't take that, don't take that out of context. Uh, next song is another, one of these posse cuts that isn't really Till the Angels Come uh, with Freddie Gibbs and Prodigy. Pretty cool having them together. Cool kind of rising up beat on this with this guitar going. Samples like this British prog rock group sped up. A very solid verse, but um, I ended up just being really excited to hear Freddie, uh, Freddie Gibbs. I love the way he raps over Alchemist's beat. Um, talks a lot about turkey bacon. Now, you know that real bacon exists, right? <laughs> just people need to stop eating turkey. Pigs exist. Unless you have a religious reason not to eat pigs, eat pigs, man. Turkeys, ugh. Ham exists. Why would you ever eat turkey? Bacon exists. Why would you eat turkey bacon? Okay, I'm taking a hard stand. Anti-weed, pro-pork. Okay? Uh, and then Prodigy, you know, is here. And, and I love Prodigy. I love Mob Deep, you know. But this is my most critical thing I want to say about this album. I don't like the way he interacts with this beat. This just doesn't sound right to me. I don't, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because I don't like hearing him not produced by Havoc or produced by himself. I, I, you know, I, just, I, don't know. I don't know. Then we get to another song that should be a posse cut but isn't, The Daily News. That's because Earl Sweatshirt and Action Bronson just do this sort of tag team chorus that's just awesome. This beat, man, this beat is, so this is the best beat on the album. Totally crazy swirling sounds from a band called Isotope, the song Sliding Dogs, Lion Sandwich. You get the sense that Alchemist heard this and just had to fit it in somewhere. Just like, then it turns into this like, this weird almost, reminds me of like the soundtrack to uh, 70s Giallo movies, which are um, Italian horror movies like made by Dario Argento, music done by this group called Goblin, has that kind of feeling. But the, but then this like really hard drum beat from a band called Jaggers comes in and it's just this great drum beat, great mixture, just really figured out how to mix together these samples. Uh, I like how Domo talks about how his flow is crispy like $100 bills and then later Space Ghost Perp shows up and says pocket full of cheesy same color Luigi. Uh, dead presidents, the resident is breezy. So I like how there's this real, like both of them are playing off this idea of $100 bills. And then in the middle, we have, uh, you know, we had this great back and forth with with uh, Action and Earl. Space Ghost Perp is one of those musicians, one of those artists where when I looked up, you know, when I taught my lesson on internet rap, which is pretty interesting. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll put, put that up somewhere. You know, he's this like amazingly influential figure with the Raider clan and sort of the early days of, of internet rap, just being this huge figure who basically just fell off because apparently he's such a difficult person to work with. But God damn, is he a good rapper? I love his like low and menacing growl and just Alchemist knows how to use the, these, these horns to punctuate it. It's just great. Next song's Game Breaker featuring Earl Sweatshirt. Crazy kind of smoky sound. I think this is my favorite verse from Domo Genesis on this album. 
shows off his ability to do internal rhymes. That's where you rhyme within a line. Multisyllabic rhymes, that's where more than one syllable rhyme. And then mosaic rhymes, which is where one word rhymes with two rhyme, two words. Um, so, you know, I'm showing ass. Shorty's getting gassed at all the cash I blow. Internal ass, gas, cash. Again, I'm pass and go. Laugh in the time of... In a, in a timely fashion, this rapper-ish is my passion. No acting, I make it happen. Look back at your whack reaction. Give me racks, bout to cash them. The stacks you can't imagine. Spark it, flash it, pass it. You know, the, the mosaic example is cash them and imagine, right? To cash them is three words. Imagine is one word, mixes those all together. Uh, you know, passion, action, reaction. Those are all multiple syllable rhymes. You know, just all these things happening in here and it just creates this great flow. I sort of wish that he was always this good, you know? But, I, you know, maybe it's a California thing. You know, he's just kind of laid back. Speaking of laid back, Earl Sweatshirt is very laid back and awesome here. He makes reference to meeting Paul McCartney at Olive Garden. And this led me to find this picture of Earl Sweatshirt and Paul McCartney hanging out um, <laughs> at, I guess, at the studios at NPR. And I put this on my Instagram. You can follow me on Instagram if you want. like Or don't. I don't know. I can't figure out Instagram. But, uh... I just found this picture. I didn't take it, obviously. And Paul McCartney is trying so hard to look cool with Earl Sweatshirt. He's like way back. He's like making a face like this with his hand on his shoulder. It's one of my favorite things about Paul McCartney. He's like the richest musician alive, the like the best living songwriter, one of the greatest songwriters of all time. And he's such a tryhard. <laughs> he's still such a tryhard. I love it. I guess that's how you get to be that good. Next song is The Feeling. This one's a little bit on, on autopilot. I don't know. It's a sped up kind of soul jazz sample. It's fine. But then it leads up to No Idols, which is the closing of the original release of the album. Um, it's a Polish prog rock sample sped up and just absolutely crazy. And then we just have this verse from Tyler. And this is just what blew my mind because I heard it and I remember thinking, wow, is this verse going to be influential for all these tricks that he's doing? Not realizing that he did 11 years ago. Cuban chain tucked just in case you don't, you, uh, you know, I don't like stomping, but since we on the subject, I'm good, brah. It's nothing. Lettuce in my pocket. Salty ends need to. Catch up. You're full of baloney if you don't think my bread's up. But let us get this cheese. You must have heard Rella. Never mind, you don't even like sandwiches, fella. This great trick of like saying a whole line and then swallowing the the swallowing the rhyme word. It's just great. And then he's able to create an entire sandwich out of this whole thing. You don't like sandwiches, and he talks about lettuce and ketchup. Although who puts ketchup on bologna sandwich? It's okay. It's okay. Ketchup doesn't go on a bologna sandwich. Mayo goes on. Or Cool Whip, if you're a sadist. Masochist, I'm sorry. If you're a sadist, you would serve somebody a sandwich with Cool Whip. If you're a masochist, you would eat a sandwich with Cool Whip. Again, going back to the food stuff, mayonnaise exists. <laughs> so why would you eat Cool Whip? Anyways. Uh, by the way, get QP mayonnaise, because that's got MSG in it. And MSG is not bad for you. You see, listen, I'm not against all stuff that people think is bad. I may be against THC, but I'm a big fan of MSG. The only reason that people think that is bad for you is because of some weird, whack, racist pseudoscience in the 70s. Look it up. Seriously, they called it like Chinese food disease. It's just totally wrong. I have, I have a jar of MSG in my kitchen. Straight up jar. You can just buy it. It's good. It's called Flavor Enhancer. Anyways, love this verse. It's just great. And there's an insane beat switch with like this Dutch pianist. Uh, and then like Domo starts rapping and then Tyler jumps on. And uh, <laughs> um, he says, I want to be successful by the age of 21. The first two times I listened to it, I was like, isn't he like 30? What does this mean by the time I'm 31? Um I bullished this verse, but lucky enough, the Dick Riders will still go berserk. That is true. You know, everything he does, people go into it, but then he tags it with no idols, saying he doesn't want you to be his idol. You know, I, I just taught uh, late stage Kendrick in my class yesterday. I, I taught Mr. Ron the Big Suppers and really emphasized that, that um, 
the role of Messiah or of idol is often put onto people who just want to be artists. So uh, at the end, they have the producer tag of everybody's pal. I guess he's just given up on producer tags because like he's just so everywhere. Ooh, there's a tufted titmouse. Let's see my uh, bird feeder. Can you tell that I have undiagnosed ADD? <laughs> Maybe I need some drugs to get me spiritual. Uh, this is the final track. This is an added track on here to this new version. High strings, these cool drums, this kind of like ghost note snares. So much great snare work going on here. Breezy sounds. You know, I like this. You know, you think I wouldn't like it because, you know, it says drugs make me spiritual. But, you know, I mean, the, the main thing is, you know, I'm, I'm all for spirituality. And if people have to go through drugs to get to spirituality, that's great if they can eventually drop the drugs because, you know, people don't need drugs or religion to get spiritual. They just need to have their mind open to the wonder of just being alive on planet earth right so whatever gets you to being understanding that every morning that you wake up is a miracle from all existence you know what i mean like whatever gets you to that point cool as long as you can go on with your life you know they see more than your physical i think these drugs got me spiritual these effing drugs got me spiritual still young and dumb going numb in my living room it's fun it's fine. Good song. Uh, Remy Banks has a fine verse. <laughs> Eyes lower than my bucket brim. Kind of a funny line. So there's my review. I've been fooled by Alfonso Camisto, by The Alchemist, but I'm happy to be fooled. Happy to review this. I'm happy. I want like, I want there to be like deluxe re-editions of all of the albums that I missed while I was being a dumbass thinking that hip-hop was dead. Because hip-hop's not dead. Hip hop super alive, and part of the reason it's alive is because of projects like this. Thank you to my Patreons. Got a new one down there, Macrocosmic. Thank you for that. I owe you a message. You sent me a message on Patreon. I respond to messages on Patreon usually. Bowden, I owe you a response as well. Okay, until next time. There's the camera. <laughs>